whether you are a 10% shop, whether you are a shop that has 300,000 employees. I request you as this as an imperative, it's mandatory. You prepare your cash flow forecast every quarter for the next eight quarters. Eight quarters. Make scenarios, make assumptions. Be the king who knows how to control cash. Over the past year, we've seen surging gas prices, right? We've heard everything about the great resignation, major turnover, <clears throat> and now this word recession. There's a debate even whether or not we are in a recession or not in a recession. But at the end of the day, we all feel like something's coming. There's storm clouds on the horizon. Let's start off, set the stage for me, and answer almost the specific question that everyone I know wants to know. Do you think we're headed towards a recession? Are we in a recession? Are we leaving <clears throat> a recession? Let's talk about it. Across the globe, in America, in Europe, in every country, we are feeling the pinch of increasing prices. It is here, it is going to happen. I want every one of us to have psychologically be strong that prices are increasing and not get confused by these big buzzwords of recession or great resignation. The fact is the downturn has begun. Yes. You are hearing layoffs. You will hear more of those. There will be reduction in the sizes of companies their revenues will decline. That downturn is heavier in Europe, much heavier in Ukraine because of the war. It has begun in the United States. It is happening in China in a very observable way. And it has begun in every single country. What I want you, Johnny, and everybody, leaders and each of us have tremendous resilience, be psychologically strong, we will cope with this inflation. We will cope with this downturn. It will be longer, but we can survive any disaster. Now, let's talk about it. So, we're going to have an economic slowdown. Yes. We, we are in an we economic are in. slowdown. Okay. What does this mean for corporations specifically across the United States? Number one, inflation and recession, both. Same volume of business takes more cash. Cash is king. You control the cash flow in and out. Watch the out and generate in. I like that. Simple, just like the street vendor does. He goes and buys something in the morning for cash, and he's got to have a cash at the end of the day. Otherwise, the life is very difficult. Yes. So that's the first part of it. Got it. Number two, if you have the problem of not having cash, trying to find to secure lines of cash right now. Got it. And you're going to pay hard interest, but without cash, your business will shut down. Yes. If you are a business, larger one, you're going to see this, you're going to downside it, you're going to have layoffs. It's terrible to have a layoff, but if you do not downsize, you do not eliminate indirect costs, you do not eliminate waste costs, these are the first ones. And if you do not eliminate cost where you have unprofitable products, unprofitable customers, unprofitable channels, this is the time to clean up the attic, generate your cash. You will have some customers who don't pay for 200 days. You can't afford them. Try to help them keep good customers. It's common sense what is needed, your re resoluteness to do the right thing because if you don't do, you will lose all employees, and that's not good for the nation. So I heard uh, there are three things to focus on. Cash, cash, and cash, cash. right? At the end of the day, that's what I heard. Exactly. And that's sage exactly. advice, right? So I got another question for you. Everyone's yep. talking about the Federal Reserve. You can't mm. every day. Jerome Powell is like one of the most important people and famous names recently. Yes. Right? What do you think about all of the actions the Federal Reserve is taking? Uh, yes. Now, first thing all of us should realize, Federal Reserve is an institution, but the decisions made by people, they are human beings, they make errors. Yes. They made an error when the inflation was clear to many, they thought it was transitional. Now they are on it, and they say we will do everything we can 
to bring it down from roughly 8 point something or core 6 point something to 2%. Well, here is the problem. Their intent is good. They have tools. They can. They don't control the whole world. Right. So there will be slips between the cup and the lip, and we have to protect ourselves. So we have this really, and you talk about dilemmas. Here's the dilemma. I'm actually noticing some companies are raising their prices in the face of an economic downturn. What's that all about? First, the company CEO and his team must come to term, her team. This downturn will go away. You will still have customers. You still have brand. Never, ever allow the brand to be cracked in a negative sphere. That means the customer trust. You increase prices, you're doing for a reason. If the customer does not experience, emotionally feel, that the customer getting the value for it, your brand will be nicked forever. Bingo. I remember in the 80s, when a chocolate company cut the bar in size. Yes, did go That was well. dumb. <laughs> that chocolate company suffered. I was asked to come to the board. The board required changing two directors. We took a vote and required changing the whole management team. It took minimum eight years to be able to restore the trust with the customer. Some tinkered with the taste. It was cheaper. No. You're going to be here. Today, Procter & Gamble is 180 years old. Hershey, more than 100 years old. We have lots of companies that survive these hurricanes, this volatility. You really can never lose the trust of the customer. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you can raise prices but you must do so with trust and fidelity, which means you've got to communicate the increased value offer. Relevant value. Relevant value, that's right. You change your priorities of product development, of packaging. Yes. The delivery. Right. This is the final thing about business. Consumer convenience, value to the customer, and cheaper. There are three sort of maxims in this pricing space. There's customer convenience. Customer convenience. Customers always dissatisfied. Number two, relevant value to the customer. And number three, keep your productivity and innovation alive yes. such that this total cost of your company is more and more inexpensive that translates the price to the customer to be more inexpensive. Thank you for being very honest about it because, you know, depending upon what news media outlet you're reading, they're either spinning, it's going to be bad, some are saying not so bad, etc. So it's really important to hear from someone like you who has the level of experience and objectivity and globally relevant experience. So let's talk about that. You know, I've read a lot of your works over the years and you have a ton of them. They're usually about business strategy, how to make organizations <clears throat> grow in good times. Why are you releasing this book now? Share with me the thought, what made you write this mm -hmm. book and mm -hmm. why now? Johnny, I'm 83 years of age. God bless. I lived in the worst period of the last roughly 80 years in 1982-83. Yes. When the interest rates went to 21%, where people watching every hour where the prices are going. So General Electric asked me to create a program for their 1,000 executives, how to cope with inflation. So I designed and taught COIN, coping with inflation. Coping with inflation. COIN. So all of us going to be coping both inflation and the downturn. Resilience, psychological security, creativity to find ways, and changing some habits. So that gave me the impetus in May to write a nine-page article in the Chief Executive magazine. Yes. And then they asked me to write the book, and this book is coming in late October. It will be easily available. All of my books are easy, easily accessible, and I write books for people who can use it Monday morning. What I love about your writing also is despite 
your Harvard trained business school education and all of that good stuff, the average American can actually understand it if they put any time into it. So you take really complex, complex and complicated economic terms and you make it make sense. So thank you for writing it. And just before we wrap this up, throughout your book, you used a, a, a phrase that I like a lot. It sums up everything. Inflation eats cash. Talk about that. Yes. So my background is I learned the business at the age of 10 in my small shoe shop, which is about 15 feet by 10 feet. And in that shoe shop, we go to the place to buy the shoes. So we go to buy a shoe for 10 rupees. Now, next time we go, we buy for 11 rupees. Same shoe. Right. It requires more cash. So inflation, increase in price, is using more cash for the same merchandise, same volume, same product. Inflation eats cash. You manage for cash. You don't manage for revenues. You don't manage for EPS, earnings per share. You manage for cash. Ram Sharan, Dr. Ram Sharan, thank you.